Welcome back to Kevin's Trooper Channel. It's about, uh, oh, I don't know, six, almost seven o'clock. The sun's just starting to come up. We're getting ready to get started for the morning. The goal for today is to try to finish these things up, done with them, completed. Got a lot of steps left because I want to spend a lot of time on the finishing work, the priming and the sanding and the painting. That's what's going to make or break this shelving system is this last part. I don't want to rush it from here to the end is going to be the most important part. So I'm going to spend a lot of time today sanding and fine tuning and touching up. And I also want to uh, practice cutting out those holes for my latches. Now I was beginning to cut out a hole yesterday right before I went in the house and I broke my only uh, jigsaw blade. So I'm going to have to run up to the hardware store and get one. I'm sure I'll need something else today at some point. So um, I'm going to work a little bit and see what else comes up before I go. They're not open just yet anyway. So I'm going to get everything set up here, get ready to uh, get started working, and I'll be right back with you guys. Right before I went in the house last night, I did a little test panel for that new texturized paint that I got for the box. And let me show you guys how that turned out. Look at this. Look how nice that is. That's going to be perfect. That's exactly what I was wanting them to look like. Not just regular paint, but something to give it just a little bit more of a hardness and a little bit more of a, a texturized finish. All right, guys, let me show you all where I'm at. It makes such a huge difference having everything sanded smooth and rounding off all the corners and getting all the rough spots sanded down. I mean, it made a huge, huge difference to how finished this thing looks. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go ahead and put the primer on the inside. I taped the uh, slides off. Now, if you guys are going to do one of these on your own, tape the slides off before you start sanding. That was one of the mistakes that I made. You don't really want sawdust in all your ball bearings here. I had to blow it out and they have grease in there. So I'm going to go ahead and prime all the inside here. And uh, then I'm going to put the drawers in and finish sanding the drawers. And then I will start priming the outside. But I'm going to go ahead and do the inside first so that it can be drying. Make sure that you wear one of these. Take care of your health. Outside, I'm gonna prime it and cover it with carpet and then the drawers will get that textured spray paint I got another little quick tip for you guys well I don't know if you could call it a quick tip but that's these tub of towels if you've never used these things man they're great I keep these things everywhere like I just finished spray paint and I had that spray all over my arms I just took one of those wiped it off and I'm ready to go even after you get a little bit hot and sweaty, you take one of these. Man, it's almost like taking a shower. These tub of towels are great. I keep them everywhere. I don't know if that's a quick tip, but anyway, hope it helps you. It's now time to start thinking about these drawer latches. So what I've done is I've taken one of the rubber gaskets that goes behind the drawer latch, and I've put it on here, and I've traced around it. This is a scrap piece of wood. My goal is to cut this out with my jigsaw and see on a scrap piece how the drawer latches are going to work. Check out how awesome 
that's going to be And now I know that is the shape that I need. I'm gonna use that as my pattern when cutting out the drawers. Very nice. It's time to make some catches for the drawers. And my plan is <clears throat> to cut a piece of angle iron and screw to the upper part of the inside of the cabinet to give this catch something to latch onto. Little small piece of angle iron I'm going to cut and drill two holes in so I can screw it to the top of the cabinet. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to cut a piece of angle iron. Then I'm going to drill two holes in it. I'm going to polish it up on the wheel. Then I'm gonna spray paint them with some acid etching primer. And there's my latches. Now make sure after you get your drawers built that you mark right and left on the bottom of it. I just put an R on that one and an L on that one so that I don't get them mixed up. Once I pull them out to paint them, you want to make sure you're able to get them on the right side, especially if the measurements were just a little off or you, this, the right drawer was built for the right side and the left drawer was built for the left side. So you want to keep them that way. You don't want to get them mixed up. All right, I'm still sanding on the drawers. Now, what I had originally wanted to be able to do was to take this carpet and wrap it around and staple it underneath. But I didn't think I would have room for the drawers to close. I thought it would interfere with the drawers closing. But if you'll look, I have enough of a gap all along here, except for maybe right here, which I'm sanding as we speak, in order for this carpet to go all the way down and wrap under. Otherwise, I was going to have to cut it on this line, and it was going to end up looking like that. And I didn't want it to look like that. I wanted to be able to wrap my carpet all the way underneath and staple it and have the drawer close on it like that. And I think I'm going to be able to do that. I'm super excited about that. That's going to work so much better. I'm just making sure that I have enough of a little gap. You see, I got a nice gap here, but this right there was a little tight. But after I sanded it, I think it's going to work out great. I might hit it just a little bit more just to make sure this drawer will close. All right, here is our latch. Check out how awesome that turned out. It locks really nice. Now, I did make one little error in the back. If you guys will come right here, I can show you what that error was. Fortunately, it's very fixable, but this This is our latch, which is going to go against the cabinet like this. And the mistake that I made is I was thinking the inside of the cabinet is here. Well, it's not, it's down here. So I'm three quarters too high 
I could, should have put these three quarters of an inch lower than what I did. See, that's not going to work. So what I'm going to do, and this is going to fix this actually just fine, is I'm just going to trim this tab off a little bit at the tip so that when I put this piece of angle iron on the roof like this, on the, on the ceiling of that opening, when this locks closed, it will be against the, the latch like so. Now, what I'm going to try to do is angle this just a little bit because as I turn this, I want it actually to get more snug and tighter, sort of pull the drawer in to close. So I'm going to try to angle this like this in on the ceiling just a little bit. So as this touches it and makes contact, it, it will get tighter as it tightens. So it will be just like that. Just like that. So all I have to do is trim that top of this tab off a little bit and it should be fine. It should work out great. So I'm going to do that now and then we're going to keep moving forward. One little mistake, but not a big deal. It's fixable. Okay. So what I just did was I held my carpet up there and I got the width that I needed and marked it. And I'm going to start trimming the carpet. So at least I won't have so much bulkiness to work with. And you can see right here, that's about what I need for the width. So there you go, it's going to give me a little bit to curl under the bottom. And a little bit to fold under. I want to make sure I have it pretty straight. My goal here is I'm going to fold this half back and start gluing and stapling. And I'll get it to about here and have it all stapled in and glued. And then I'll fold the other half back glue and staple the back and we should be good to go. That looks pretty even right there. I'll start with this bit and then pull each side out to the edges really tightly and staple as I go. I'm going to be using a 3-8 staples and my new DeWalt staple gun. For glue, I'm using the 3M High Strength 90. It's good stuff. I want to make sure I get plenty right on this edge. We'll give it a few minutes to get kind of tacky. And this is a two substrate glue, which means you want to put glue on both sides. On what you're gluing and what you're gluing to. You'll want to put it on both 
both sides. You know, I remember when I bought this roller thinking I'm never going to use this. I use this for so many different things. That glue is sticking well. Now when you fold both of these sides in, you're gonna have this extra piece. And that whole extra piece needs to get cut off. Like that, you're cutting that off of it, a triangle. And then it will fold around with no problems at all. I just really hope my drawers close with this carpet folded around like this. That's the only question. Is I just really hope that they do. And I have no way of measuring that. Other than do it see I put a trial piece of carpet up and it seemed like it worked but there's really no way to know for sure without just doing it love the stapler my other stapler stays in my shooting range box and I keep having to go dig after it whenever I want to get a, a staple something. I have it in my shooting range box to staple targets up with. All right, check that out. There we go. Now I'm probably gonna run a little piece down here. Look how good those corners turned out though. Really nice. gentlemen check it out fully carpeted you can see my carpet seam right here turned out pretty decent and you see my other one on this side turned out pretty decent too this is against the back seat so it really doesn't matter that much now I started to try to run this carpet all the way down inside here, but what I decided to do instead 
is I'm gonna get some rubberized coating, like some uh, diamond tread molded rubber. I have some over there, I'll show you. And I'm gonna line this whole inside here to the bottom with a rubberized coating, uh, like a almost like a matting material. So that's not gonna matter. Turned out good though. Yeah, let me show you all that material I'm talking about. It is this stuff right here. How nice is that? In a future video coming up very soon, I'm going to line my roof rack toolbox with that. I've been saving that, but I'll give you guys a little sneak peek. I'm going to be lining that little bin and my roof rack toolbox with this stuff right here. Is that nice? Nice thick diamond tread rubber matting. So all I really have left to do is finish the painting on the drawers and it's all ready to go. Install the handles. I still have to install the little catch lock for the for the handle that I built. That's going to take some time and some adjusting, I'm sure. And so I'm going to put all this stuff away and edit some videos for you guys. And we'll get to this next weekend. Thanks for joining me. See you.